Hi, everyone. Hello. I've been trying to figure out how to do break rooms, but it's, it's not happening. <laughs> I don't I don't have enough permission to, to do it. So. Cool, let's wait a couple of minutes and then we'll get started. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. I'm gonna share the doc again in the chat. Um, for the sake of better tracking, let's uh, put names down as well for the meetings. And the attendance.
Supply chain landscape doc. That sounds fascinating. Sounds picturesque. Sounds like a picturesque landscape. You know. <laughs> that, uh, that was my goal. Paint a picture. Awesome. I think we have most people at the call. So I think that's what's at it. Um, so uh, today's agenda is um, we're going to go through announcements and then we'll do some check ins on what people have been up to with the reference architecture. Um, and then we'll go through some of the material of the reference architecture diagram. There seems to be quite a lot of discussion within that thread. Um, so we'll aim to spend about 15, 15 minutes for that. And then uh, for the rest of the time, I think we want to spend a bit of an opportunity to go into breakout sessions to work on the specific areas. Uh, and we, we will figure out how we're going to do breakout sessions when we get there. Um, I tried to do the Zoom one, but I don't have permissions to do it, unfortunately. Um, we'll figure it out. So I'm going to put the meeting link in um, the description again, the, the chat. Um, please put your name down. Um, cool. So quick announcements. Um, Ava has um, shared a landscape document that she's been working on um, for the surface supply chain. Um, we will be taking a look at that tomorrow. And you know, this um, we will also socialize that to see whether other folks want to come in and take a look at that next week as well. Um, and next week, we are planning to have the outline basically pretty much done. And so it will be a review on all the different components and all the different fields that we've come out with. Um, Eva, do you want to give like a quick um, minute rundown teaser trailer for your document? Sure, thanks. Um, so as I've been diving in this space and chatting with folks across a bunch of different companies and and multiple foundations. Um, everyone gave me a different perspective, which has been lovely, but also felt a little bit like we're all in the dark, touching an elephant, describing different parts of it. And uh, before I start writing any code, I felt like I wanted to understand, um, even if it helped nobody else, but it sounds like it will help others, what the overall landscape is. And my, my hope from this document, in addition to just creating a, a sort of a guide or a, a you know, choose your own adventure map of what's out there, who's working on what, um, is to build us a, a, a taxonomy, um, if you will, or a worldly map style um, uh, lexical analysis of why all these different projects are valid and valuable and how they might integrate with each other or support each other in different configurations. Um, since each project that I've listed so far um, it solves part of the supply chain puzzle, but no one project solves the entirety of it. And there, I'm sure, are valid reasons for each of these projects to, to exist. Uh, I've got a couple other documents linked out from this one. The meta-analysis goes into some of the more, um, the less technical challenges in the space. Um, it's not necessarily relevant to what the technology is, but it provides a little bit of a backstory to why I wanted to understand what everyone's doing um, and what products are going on. And then I got a little bit of a proposal um, down at the bottom, the, the main document the analysis document, the synthesis section at the end is mostly full of to do's. I'm hoping to fill that in through discussions, whether as a group or one-on-one, -on -one, um, once we all kind of see what the landscape looks like. There's one example of this under mapping the domain right now. Um, formats, artifacts, and tools. It's the name of the link. And this is just a, I'll, I'll drop the, the direct link in chat. Um, one possible presentation of a, of a lexical description of the domain. And I'd love to see other ideas if folks have been working on or, or even have ideas, and I'm happy to do the work to, to draw it and, and flesh something out of what are other ways we might um, logically group projects based on their business function or their security function to create a map of this domain. That's it. Awesome. Thanks, Eva. Yeah, well, let's let's do a deep dive next time around, and then uh, we'll get other folks as well. I think I wanna have um, some of the folks that are also working on the cognitive security landscape as well. 
take a look to see whether we can we can help include some of the work there as well. What kind of feedback are you looking for, if any? Um, I would love uh, to start with any any additional projects that I've missed um, or foundations where work is happening. Um, I'd love those contributions. Uh, any um, discussions or debate around some of the hypotheses I've got in here, I'd love that as well. Um, if you want to do it in the doc or you want to just DM me on Slack, that's great. Um, and then if you have a, a proposed mapping or a synthesis, um, I think that'd be good for discussion. So you're welcome to add it to the doc and we can talk about it next week. Awesome. Awesome. Great, so let's, I'm looking forward to that. And I think a lot of the content there will also educate um, the work that we're doing for the reference architecture as well. So thanks to Counter Goshers, just do quick check-ins. If you've been working on something, you want feedback on some of the things that you've, you've done or just quick update on what's going on. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by, by pointing the finger at Michael. Oh sure. Give yeah. A quick update. Uh, two updates um, from my side. Uh, one is um, the Open SSF, uh, which is our you know um, partner <laughs> uh, foundation here, the part of the Linux Foundation. Um, they are also doing some work with um, uh, supply chain security. They want to obviously they want to collaborate with us a bit more. Um, they're looking maybe in I believe on August. Uh, ninth, I believe. Let me just double check here. I believe it is, yes, August 9th at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time. I think that they're looking to um, the Open SSF Planning Committee wants sort of uh, just a brief overview of the work we're doing as part of the CNCF. Um, so that's just something uh, to throw out there. This is literally came in, uh, I guess, last night. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of organizations uh, working on this, which is why uh, I think what Ava's doing is is really great as well, because um, <laughs> I, I do think that there's a lot of folks all working on different pieces, and we do want to sort of make sure that at least we're all largely aligned to the same sort of thing, um, even if not doing the same specific thing. Uh, so, that, so that's one update. Uh, the second update is so... Uh, Real quick on that update, Dave is Dave Wheeler, for those that don't know Dave. Michael, do you want to do that August 9th meeting with them? Sure. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can do that. Um, and uh, yeah, so on my end, there's a few folks who, who mostly attend the open SSF stuff. Um, but uh, what was the, oh, so the second update is uh, first uh, regarding Salsa. So um, I reached out to the Salsa folks, which are also part of the open SSF. Um, though right now, uh, mostly Googlers, uh, reaching out to them a bit about how we can increasingly collaborate and also sort of expressed a little bit of, you know, not a massive concern, but there is, uh, you know, after having spoken to a few people in the community, there is a concern that it is a Google project, right? You know, it is, there's a concern that it is very much being pushed to, you know, for Google, uh, a potential Google agenda, but like, regardless like hey if we can get something that's more of a uh, a governance around it and something that is clear that oh this is actually going to be community driven then i think it's going to be a little bit of an easier sell to the community and other and other folks um so that's another thing that that i've been um starting to discuss and the world has gotten great things from google so i don't and i think this, oh yeah this is a particular breakthrough one uh, the one I'm, I'm less worried about the governance. I'm more about like, hey, how how adopted and validated this has been. Co correct, and I think that's the sort of thing that we're we're trying to also, or I would love uh, to to get more involved in is, you know, hey, I, I recognize that this has worked internally well for Google. Um, there are some stuff there where, hey, it's not going to work for everybody. So we do want to make sure that. Uh, if let's say the general um, approach that they're taking seems like the general approach and just my personal opinion, it seems largely reasonable. Um, I think that there's some 
specifics and then there's some other pieces in there that I feel like need to be a bit more uh, focused or you know, more generic or whatever. Um, and some of those things uh, want to work with them on because, yeah, I, I agree, right? Like, uh, you know, for my day job, it's, it's hard for me to, t you know, to go to somebody and say, hey, we should adopt this standard that so far oh, nobody else has adopted. Uh, that's going to be a hard sell. But if they start to see, you know, there is a governance there, there are people contributing to it. There seems to be a lot of movement in the area, they're going to be say, okay, yep, yeah, we we're maybe not going to say officially we're adopting it, but we can at least take a look and, and start to see, um, you know, at least kind of put that as a goal to eventually adopt it. Yeah. A lot of it is perception. But what we also don't want is, well, have them over rotate on go governance, if they even pay attention to us. I'm sorry, Priya, <laughs> talking of Google as if Google weren't in this conversation. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. if, if, if you throw in like, oh, we, we're going to put like a token person or from other companies in there and these folks are not having a say or not helping like give the project track, well, the framework traction and adoption, it's, it's self-defeating. Yeah. So I, I want to keep that conversation for when we are talking about this section. I think we can go into a deeper dive on that. And then by then we may have a bit more information from conversations there as well. Uh, I want to just go through, and does anybody have uh, questions about the reference architecture updates about the reference architecture that they would like feedback on or just like to educate the group on? All right, if not, let's go ahead with, um, with the architecture diagram. So let's aim to spend about 15 minutes on this, uh, get some clarity, get some new action items for this, and then we'll go ahead and go to the breakout sessions. Um, so there was a lot of chatter in the, um, the thread on the reference architecture. Um, does the folks on the, in that group wanna, the discussion. Sure, uh, uh, Alex. Do you want to um, chair? Uh, it, to be clear, it's it's still very early. Um, at least on my end, it's uh, with planning. Um, it's been kind of a a rough week uh, as far as meeting, so I didn't get it too much time to to look at it. Um, I. I can share a little bit. I all I really did was create a very basic um, flowchart based on the white paper that we produced, the supply chain um, best practices paper. Um, just trying to break it down into sort of um, a, you know a visual flowchart form. Um, there's not a lot of detail in that chart. Um, here, let me see if I can grab the link for it and share it with everybody real quick um, so that folks can see. Um, if you if you want to share our screen, that's what that that would be. I don't know if I have permissions to ch share the screen, but I will. Um, I will drop this link in here. I'll, I'll share it. Yeah, and then if somebody else who does have permissions wants to share it, feel free. Um, yeah, so it's like I said, this is not going to win any design awards. This is not. This is like a very very basic flowchart sketch here. Um, just trying to take what we did in the paper and put it into. Um, something that we can follow. The main um, data point on here that I tried to put in was a distinction between places where um, we're defining sort of some basic expectations, you know, so for example, for a source repo that commits will be signed, that um, there won't be force merges or whatever. Those were some of those sorts of things that we talked about in the, in the best practices paper. Um, but we're not prescribing like, oh, you should store your repos in GitHub or you should use, you know, AWS's code, um, whatever the heck it's called these days. Um, we're not, we don't like that sort of detail level, we're not worried about, but we're setting some sort of basic expectations around here are some of the best practices for this versus areas where we, uh, in my understanding, are making more specific recommendations. Here are the tools we think people should use here are the alternate tools if you don't want to use those um, and sort of 
putting a more specific workflow together. So that was sort of my understanding of where we stand and just trying to put a visual on that to lay out the big buckets of concern. Um, but like I said, this is this was just meant to be a conversation starter and it's pretty basic stuff. Um, I have a suggestion um, and that is, um, have you seen the DOD's DevSecOps um, paper? <laughs> they, they have uh, like a generic reference architecture too. We, we, sh we can compare notes and see where we can supplement this with that. The software, software factory is the one I'm talking about. So let me find that and I'll paste the link here. I have a lot of my customers uh, who are looking explicitly uh, towards that white paper in general. So anything we can do to align to it will definitely work well in the enterprise. I think something like this is a, a decent entry point for a paper, but each of these nine steps probably deserves its own deep dive. Uh, one thing I've observed is this, this problem space is fractal. Each one of these, the closer you get to it, the further the edges of securing it move away from view. How, like this, the single step of deploying production, how do you secure that? Or the single step of artifact storage. There are many ways to do artifact storage that have different security properties. Yeah, uh, you bring up a, a very good point there and, and totally agree. And I think the idea here was, uh, you know, each box or even sometimes even the arrows between the boxes could become their own things. I think the thing that we want to make sure of is that because as you mentioned, I think you, that's a very good uh, uh, way to describe it. it. Since it is fractal, a lot of these things, it's like, if we're think, you know, because it's supply chain, you need to think about the whole thing as well as each individual piece, um, which, which is huge uh, for us. Cause like the, the, th the thing that I, uh, I think we've recognized a few times is, um, you know, people sort of focus purely on, you know, securing the build, but they don't think about, well, are you securing the inputs of the build? And are right. you securing how you're downloading them? And, and so we want to be able to paint a, a reasonable picture that sort of highlights that, hey, you need to think about this holistically. There's always going to be some mm -hmm. level of trade-off. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, assuming you sort of are following these practices, you should be getting an artifact that you can you know, trust within some confidence. Yeah, I think one more thing is uh, we can add these provenance collections across this, uh, across basically the end to end, the work that PA has been doing with chains and everything that collect the provenance of when the task finishes, you have this uh, cryptographic signature of what task actually produced this artifact and uh, basically provide the attestations going forward, right? That can yep. be the underlying fabric across the, from basically code all the way to the testing and everything to the container. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the key piece here is, is I, th I think, uh, and I think that's one of the principles in there about, you know, provenance. Um, I, I, the only thing I, I just want to also make sure is clear, because I think some folks have got also gotten a little confused um, by it in the past was that um, there is also an element to trusting the provenance, right? Like you, if, mm -hmm. if an individual, let's say tecton task was compromised in some way, um, then you're still, you know, it's still potentially following the same pattern. You're just signing something that was was compromised, and so you have to kind of also still have the same sorts of, uh, you know, secure build processes, secure CI/CD processes. Right, right. Yep. Makes yeah. Yep. I, I, I like this diagram in terms of like how it's kind of laying things out at the high level. I think um, probably what we can do is we have the various subtopics, right? Um, so where was it? So provenance for build artifacts, provenance for dependencies, verification inputs, outputs, spring build environment. It, it seems like there is a fairly good partition of these topics to the different parts of of the um, architecture. It's, 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 uh, does that make sense, or do you think it's that isn't the, that director mapping yet. Yeah, I think when what what I heard when when Michael brought up the idea of making this diagram last week was um, that we wanted something just to sort of that we could look at to make sure that the different topics that we're breaking out weren't missing 
that we didn't have gaps in our in our plan for for how we were going to make the reference architecture. Not that this is, you know, meant to be capturing all of the information in one diagram, but just that it's meant to give us a sort of bird's eye view so that we make sure like we haven't missed something in the areas that we want to drill down into, um, if that makes sense. Yep. So essentially these are building blocks, right? Um, and we'll drill down into individual blocks with more details and controls that we want to lay out. Is yep. that it? Okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. And the only thing, the only thing just to kind of make sure add on there while still keeping the big picture in mind, right? You know, as an exact, once again, as, as a, like a quick example, like, yeah, if we're using Intoto, we're probably going to use Intoto across the whole thing, but we're also going to specifically look at how we use Intoto in each of the boxes. That makes sense yeah. to me as well. Mm -hmm. That's, that's something I was just yeah, going to add is that, I mean, very similar to what you're saying, Michael. Um, well, I really, I, I like what you're saying, Ava, about the fact the fractal nature of it, it's a very good way of looking at it and you can sort of drown in the details and each of them is a rabbit hole. But thankfully there are also some tools we're gonna to be able to reuse. Um, I mean, I think, like as you were saying, Intoto covers yeah. some of the ground, but it, for even, I mean, I've worked on, on key lime, so it comes to mind to me often, but that's one way of making sure like, you know, you're booting, you're, you're bootstrapping a node that you can have relatively high confidence in and you can use that mm -hmm. in different parts of the process to think, hmm, I build environment well, if it's loaded with, on a key lime machine, probably more secure, same thing, for the bit you know for the putting in production like oh well it's on a key line machine so it's probably more secure so stuff like that like some tools we can reuse so you got to still keep in mind the big picture and and sort of not drown too much in each of the boxes but yeah. i think yeah. everybody here has got that in mind so now the resampling of 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 that picture uh, like to be able to talk about key line it's underneath right it's like yeah. an entirely yeah. different dimension because what i see here is like tasks and logical functions you could very well run this in a monolith right but we want to we want to be able to like resample for one as ava said like within every single function and do like a layered view of that but do we want to do so yeah bird's view is great more that let's do more diagrams maybe not right now but as we move along and get like layers deeper and say, hey, this is a state of the art in confidential computing and you have to have TEs yeah. in place. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and where do TEs apply in this diagram? Yeah. Do they apply in all boxes or in some boxes? I, I can envision this as sort of here's your um, high level overview. And for each of these, you can drill down into what technology building blocks you need to make that component secure, that, that step secure. And then what options you have for each of those. Um, security components. So, so let's let's try and um, so we want to get to that. So, but before we we get to that, I think we have to. Um, so we've defined already the different areas, and so the the idea is that we will have these groups drill into what are the different components, what are the different technologies for the components, and so on. Right. So that's that would be. Um, I know there's a lot of excitement <laughs> around you know, mapping it to real technologies that's getting closer to like something real that we can we can um, execute on. So I wanna so I, I'd say let's take the next step. Um, I think that it would be a good idea to split this architecture up for now in terms of the different high-level areas and then this will give some direction for the different groups that are working on the different um, big topics um, to start producing smaller, you know, start hitting the layers down. Um, so thoughts on that? Should we, should we do this mapping exercise right now? Sure. Sure. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah. Mentally there, go for it. Yeah. Um, so let's start with provenance of the artifacts, which boxes does it touch? So, so let's just, let me just go through it really quickly. So we have provenance of the artifacts, uh, just traceability as one built steps, provenance for dependencies. Uh, this is the ingestion of, um, at, uh, of libraries and so on. Uh, verification of input outputs. This is more on like code scanning, image scanning, um, we have securing the built environment. So this is, um, you know, Tekton, um, you know, Keylime, the stuff that we, we talked about. We have distributions of, and storage of artifacts. It's a registries uh, distribution and so on. And then we have the consumption, which is the runtime side of it. 
Um, so let's start with Providence for build artifacts. I guess the Providence for build artifacts would kind of cover mostly the entire middle section. Um, you probably want provenance across like it's I guess it, it does cover like a few different boxes like you'd want the provenance to describe the entire build system you're running in every single step that you run so that could include the test and the build um like in general like that middle section in the in the diagram I think it would cover and then you'd also want to include information about the source repo in that Provenance yeah. as well, so a little bit of the pre build as well. And you should verify the provenance of your external dependencies as you pull them in. I think that's under mm -hmm. provenance of dependencies. Yeah. Well, no. I'm, I'm not sure. That. I'm not sure because when you when I start seeing stuff like traceability and S bomb, like if the S bomb includes all of your upstream dependencies and their upstream dependencies and their upstream dependencies, uh, you know you've basically covered everything on the left. Right. I, I think the, the idea behind this is that these would kind of be in sequence, right? So we would say like this is about really verifying the provenance for it. And this would be like, um, well, this isn't necessarily in order, but there will be some overlap. And that's where like we will make the transition to say, okay, now you have provenance for dependencies. You're going to take all these, uh, all the metadata and all the S bombs that come with it. And this is how you produce uh, a new artifact. Well, to to make it further or worse, if you put in binary authorization into the picture, then it also covers all of the right. <laughs> so, and it's also cyclical. So rather than trying to like just shove it into a particular section, we can we can talk about end to end provenance and do like our own diagram that overlays to this maybe maybe it grays grays out or highlights some sections over the others but mm -hmm. maybe we want to take a different approach or like you have one idea Brandon some others have have other ideas maybe we can yeah. arrive at, at consensus yeah. so uh, I can you, yeah. can you put this side by side the architecture and this thing? uh we have to change my screen sharing yeah. one second yeah. I don't I don't know how big my screen is so <laughs> okay no way. so uh, yeah one second so so I, I know we we there are multiple things I think the main thing I want to get at is you know we've been kind of doing this in circles uh, I want to try and get something in and then you know not everything that that we end up doing here is going to be the final um, and so share my screen again one other quick thought uh on on that and and why i think it makes sense to kind of have those two things be separate for the provenance for build artifacts and and the ones for dependencies is i think the build artifacts are largely things we ourselves can do um you know we we, we are pretty much you know if we are controlling what's happening and how it gets built yeah yeah we get to control all that sort of stuff um and then the Provenance for dependencies, I think, is a little bit, you know, some of that stuff is stuff we can't control. Um, we might be able to provide suggestions like, you know, oh, if you can pull in the source code directly and compile it yourself and store it yourself. Um, but there's inevitably going to be a lot of different trade offs and a lot of different other things that we're just going to have to say, hey, when, you know, considering these things and pulling in dependencies, here are the trade offs you need to make when you don't get to control whether or not the vendor or the open source provider is giving you an S-bomb, right? Like these are the things that you need to kind of consider there and, and what sorts of, you know, trade-offs are you making? Yeah. So I'm gonna also add a section over here it's called overall like security principles. And I think this could kind of fit in. It's a good introduction as well as people are like, you know, end-to-end -end provenance is important. And then you'll be seeing like, Things like these appear um, across the different boxes as we're moving through things, right? Um, I've I've added that under uh, our section here. If we start going through this and we realize that okay, maybe we need to have another section dedicated to this, then um, we can do that. 
So, so in the uh, first one, the provenance of build artifact, right? So do you also want to cover the provenance of our pipelines, right? Because that is uh, like CI/CD pipeline is Tecton base or uh, yeah. PWM base, right? I think that falls under this one, securing a built environment. Uh, I think this is the, I mean, we're talking about code uh, in our build environment. Uh, yeah. Because uh, I think this is specifically talking about build, right? We are, in the pipeline, there are additional steps beyond build. Like we are doing generation of base bomb, which is done in the pipeline. Uh, uh, all these uh, CIC, typical CICD checker vulnerability scanning and everything. Uh, so is this a wording issue? What do we think? I, I think I think we had different thoughts around this. Um, it's just yeah. uh, so I think if we had uh, in, in this uh, in the later bullet defined components of supply chain. Uh, there was one section called securing CICD pipeline. That is essentially talking about uh, securing the. If you are talking about security as core, right? We are, we want to ensure that our pipelines they, they themselves are secure. So what, 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 what would be the word that you would use here instead of build environment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I think <laughs> to, to, to me, I think we are thinking about the same things. It's just uh -huh. that we, are, we, are, uh, we have different interpretation of a build environment. Okay, Securing okay. a supply chain. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Wait, but that's the entire supply chain, right? Yeah, but that's what's in scope. No, but then if you're saying securing the entire supply chain, you're also saying, okay, how do I secure my my uh, storage and stuff like that, right? Yeah, we well, we we say pay special consideration to these things, right? This is this is not in your control, but like expect like to ask your teams for this, expect to ask your suppliers for this. So so, so this this specific I think discussion is around the scope of this bullet point. Okay. Right. So, um. May for now just put built plus CICD environment. That's fair. But we're we are conflating the strategy of how to come up with content with the actual brainstorming of things. And we already have like people for the sections where we could break out and let them like free form come up with things without the bounds of the diagram. And yeah. then we work with it rather than constraining it up front. Yeah. So, so why, why don't we do this now? Um, I think we have um, three big sections with groups of people. We have provenance of build artifacts. We have, um, I split this up earlier, Proven distribution of storage artifacts, provenance of build artifacts, verification of inputs and outputs. Um, there are overlaps with people on the various topics. That's why I just chose these three topics so that there's enough representation. Um, so how about we have an exercise where, uh, let's break out into these various groups, look at the architecture diagram, um, pick and like note down what you think is relevant for that particular topic and that particular story, and then start coming up with some flows, um, uh, some action flows, you know, that kind of like more detailed uh, drill down views of this different components and the different boxes. Um, does, that, does that sound good to everyone? Do we want to do that for how long? Um, till the end of the call. Okay, Don't, do yeah. not reconvene back here. Yeah, I, 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 it's going to be a, I honestly think it's going to be a bit of a, well, we can try. <laughs> we can try for the last, um uh, okay five minutes i will so let's do it this way let's select leads for the different groups so distribution and storage andres uh you express interest here so um i'm gonna okay. put you as a lead uh michael um you wanna be the lead for the problems with the artifacts sure yeah and then um Aratna and Aditya. I think Aratna, can, can you set up a call for that one? Sure. Yeah. So I will I'll try and bounce between rooms to just 
see whether there's any uh, there's, there's consistency around what, what everyone's doing, just to make sure that we're not going into um, crazy directions. Um, and so if anyone else wants to contribute to these, just put the name down here. Um, can you, uh, Andrews, Mike, and Aratna, can you create like a either Google Meet or Zoom link or something and paste it in the in the channel? Right now? Yeah. Yeah. So how do we we will get this info like by the Slack threads? There was a thread for each of these. So um, yeah, let's or just maybe just in the Slack main room. Just might be easier. Yeah, let's just do it in the the Slack main room. And then we can delete the messages later if it gets too messy. Um, and also update the the document with with the link here. That would be that would be helpful. Um, so let's do that now. We can stay on the call until all the rooms are set up. I'm struggling to launch a new Zoom instance without. Closing yeah. connecting one. from here, yes. <laughs> uh, let me, let me sure, there's a way. I just haven't had my coffee today yet. Let me try and see what I can do. One for for y'all. Um, how do I zoom my account? Meetings. Schedule a meeting. I'm not bad at this. All right, who wants um, this meeting room that I created? So I've created mine and sent to Aditya. Aditya, you want to jump over there? Oh, sure. So um, Brandon, we might have to get disconnected here. Okay, yeah. Uh, do you put in the, can you drop the, can you drop it in the side channel as well? Um, and then I will. Or just just um, send a message to me with the, the link as well. And then I'll put it in the document just in case other people want to join you. Also on, on for my breakout, I don't actually have a um, business want, Zoom. So. I'll, I'll give you a Zoom link and Thanks. then you can <laughs> is try it, that. Is, is, it a, is it even a good use of time at this point? We've got 20 minutes to go. I, I, I maybe just get started with the chat. I think maybe yeah, okay. we can yeah. work off. Yeah, yeah work okay. asynchronously. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll log off and, and send you guys a, a Zoom chat. Awesome. Yeah, let's not meet back here then. I think I think that's that's just that the groups work. Okay. Um, yeah, Mike, see whether that works for you. I put it. Where uh, are the links to the breakout rooms? So uh, this is going to be for provenance of the artifacts. I'm not sure whether this will work, but <laughs> try it out. I like the uh, experimental nature of this. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, all we have to do is um, get a write a paper okay. after this, describing our experience. <laughs> got a hashtag success on it. It's got to be good. <laughs> Ooh, so it says it's not started. It's not started. Oh, that means I have to probably go. Oh, let me start it then. 
Uh, one second. I'm gonna be on two Zoom calls at once. <laughs> um, we're supposed to nope. I can see if maybe I can just create a new Zoom meeting. Uh, wait, I should let me. <sighs> this is painful. Um, require authentication to join that. Let me see oh, if I can what? make. Uh, let me see if I can make one real quick and and yeah. That doesn't work. Uh, Y'all can use my WebEx, but I don't think anyone has WebEx installed. <laughs> so that's probably a different problem. Okay. I'm just catching up with the chat right now. Thank you, Michael. All right, are we missing one more? Around us. Where's Andre's uh, Zoom link? Yeah, he put it in the Slack channel. Uh, I'll paste it here. There you go. Okay, I see you now. I can, I'll go jump over there. All right. Um, Kriya and Lossima. Hey. You need some help with finding the rooms? No, I was actually uh, ah, deciding where to go, but I will. Go. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Uh, Priya, are you there? All right, cool. So I'm going to be probably closing this because it seems like everyone's already in a breakout session. Um, so the breakout sessions are in the the um, the main Zoom channel. Okay.